Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag. Rand pluses and minuses. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Claire. Welcome back, my friends, to another edition of the Lions of Liberty podcast. This is episode number 179. That means you can find the show notes for today's show over at lionsofliberty.com slash 179. How simple is that? And today's show is sponsored by, well, today we're going to call it sponsored by Amazon.com, even though Amazon doesn't have any idea. But you can actually support our site by shopping through our Amazon link, which you can find over at lionsofliberty.com slash Amazon. It costs you nothing extra to do and sends a little kickback our way to help expand our little operation here and do more fun shows like the one we have today, because this is, of course, another edition of Rand Paul Luses and Minuses. And here to do that is, of course, my Rand Paul analyst... Mr. Brian McWilliams, welcome back to the studios. Thank you so much. And I'd like to make a note to Amazon that uh, Mark said we were sponsored by you, so the cease and desist letter can go directly to him. Yes. Leave me out of it. Just uh, mail that to Lions of Liberty Studios, um, 122 Liberty Lane, Los Angeles, and it'll get there. <laughs> I would put it in Vegas. Uh, much more fun. Oh, wherever. Yeah. More likely to find us there, probably. Yeah. Well, good to be back. And you know what? What a day it has been for Rand as of the airing of this. Of course, you'll already know this, but Rand is going to be in the debate. Yay! All a right. victory! <laughs> and you know what? We have to give that right off the bat. Eh? Paulus! They really made us wait, though. I mean, it was like they were waiting and waiting. It's like till 3 p.m. or 3.15 p.m. on, on Tuesday. They slip it in at the last yeah, minute. A, a little behind the scenes, behind the curtain. We actually delayed recording this by a day because we had no idea if he was going to be in the debate or not. And we didn't want to sound right. lame and out of date like your dad's. We're opening our kimono to you. Come on in. So... <laughs> The air is fine. So, uh, yeah. So, Rand's in the debate. That's fantastic. Now, the twist of this, of course, if people are following along with this fun game we call politics, is that now, after Rand so cleverly boycotted the last debate, which worked brilliantly, may which, I uh, add. Uh, do, would you like to take a minute to gloat uh, about your I how would. we all sort of told you that we thought that it was a bad idea yes. for Rand to not be in the last debate, in the, in the undercard debate, which he boycotted when he was shunted down to there uh, for no good reason. Yeah. And um, yeah, turned out he got he went on a media spree and now it looks like he's going to be in the next That's the, right. the big boy debate. I was now. assaulted from all sides and yet I emerge victorious, as does Rand Paul. Assaulted now, in writing via email, I should... Uh, uh, should uh, confirm here. That no. pipe bomb wasn't from you? There was you? no physical. The, that the, was not the me. beating, the vicious beating I got behind the 7-Eleven? That, that, was was that was an angry Donald Trump fan. You did. <laughs> the Trump humpers, as I like to refer to them. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, Rand set this kind of pattern, though, for you boycott a debate. And then you get all this media attention and you emerge on the other side unscathed and, in fact, more polished than you would be because you have not taken the slings and arrows from your competitors. And if you look at it from Donald Trump's point of view, not to get too on the, the Trump train for this is a Rand Paul show, but I mean, look, it's like the 12th round of a boxing fight and then he's dominated for 11 rounds. He's way ahead. I mean, at this point, all you want to do is get in there and just kind of, you know, dodge some punches. You don't need to get in there and get into a whole tizzy with your opponents. And if in this case, dodging punches can just mean not being in the debate because right. he, he doesn't have to show up and to him he can say look this is bigger than me look Megan Kelly this Megan Kelly she's always talking trash on me that's my uh, my that's classic <laughs> well hold on let's skip back on it because we have not revealed to the people yet if they have not been playing along that Donald Trump has decided to boycott the event because of Megan Kelly oh, and he's threatening to anyway he's threatening to boycott the debate as of this recording on Tuesday evening he claims he will definitely not be in the debate so we shall see wizardry wizardry <laughs> He's wizarding his way through this, but you know. So, so you're saying he doesn't have to play. He, he, there's no. He can take the. He can take it on the chin. Look, if it doesn't work out and he misses the debate and his numbers drop, he's still got. 45 more debates that he can make up the time with? Although this is the last one before Iowa, which is why it's so important for Rand to make the big boy stage. I mean, I, it was great that he boycotted the last one because they put him down on the on the undercard and he got a, a ton of media appearances. Uh, he was on MSNBC, CNN, I, all the, uh, all, I guess all the Fox rival networks wanted to be like, hey, we'll take this guy. And, um... But now he's also he's also on The Daily Show. We'll yeah. talk about that more in a bit. And, you know, he got all this attention out of it, but... 
Now that you're on the big boy stage, we're back to business. It's the last debate before Iowa. It's taking place in Iowa, so it's very important that he's in this debate. Super important. And I, I find it hilarious who they slotted in to replace Rand in the undercard, though, which is none other than Jim Gilmore. Jim Gilmore! <laughs> Raised from the dead, Jim Gilmore. Called on his couch, woke up from a nap snoozing with a, uh, a microwave dinner sitting on his chest. And as Rico said, uh, immediately called his chief of staff, and they rushed to find the biggest table in the corner of the library with their laptops. Yeah, that is where the, the Gilmore <laughs> campaign meets at the, at the local public <laughs> library. <laughs> campaign um, headquarters. Man, we should do a show uh, later on down the down the campaign line if he stays in. Uh, Gil, more or less. I love it. Oh, man. Jimmy. How many people are sitting here right now thinking... Who is Jim Gilmore? <laughs> Seriously. He was in like the first undercard debate, and then they said you have to have at least like 1% to get in them, and he never hit that. So I guess he must have seen a tick recently, and now he has like whatever very small requirement it takes to get into the uh, the kitty table debate. So, hey, props to you, Jim Gilmore. I've only seen you speak uh, in one undercard debate, and uh, you didn't seem like the worst. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I mean, his foreign policy is not great. But well, why are we even? Why are we even talking about? Why are we wasting? I don't know. So far, we talked about Donald Trump <laughs> and Jim Gomore on the latest Rand policies and minuses. Let's this get into some Carly Fiorina talk. Yeah, Fiorina or Fiorino. I mean, we could do this all day long. But let's talk more about Rand Paul. This is actually the first Rand Paul show we've done of the year. We did the Rand, the Rand year in review, and then we did we did, dedicated one week to analyzing Ted Cruz and basically telling you people that yes, no, he's the worst. Don't even think about. About supporting him if Stay you're a liberty away. person. He's, that is, he's shit on your shoe. Wipe it off on the stoop before you come <laughs> right. in. That was, of course, our Ted Cruz and Bruising. So what? And that was uh, episode 175, which we'll link to in the show notes later on. But let's get back to more Randy Pants stuff. So, right, what, so what's going on with Randy Pants? So Randy Pants, you know, moving on from the debate stuff. We'll see how that turns out, and we'll do. We'll be doing, of course, our uh, recap show for the debate. Yes, and this, that will air when. Well, it will air on next Monday, episode number 180. You will be finding that in your iTunes feed. However. For the Lucky Ducks, and we always post this in the Lions of Liberty forum, by the way, so I should have it up on YouTube hopefully sometime Friday, the day after the debate, because you got Felony Friday airing in your podcast feed on Friday, so we're not going to replace that, but... If you go over to our private Facebook group, look it up in your little Facebook search bar. And if you don't have Facebook, I get it. I get it. You're old and you're, you're afraid of the NSA. I, well, and, you're being, and you're being called for polls all the time. Lots, lots of reasons you, you like wouldn't want to be on phones. There are many legitimate reasons not to be on Facebook. But if you are, please join our conversation. Search the Lions of Liberty Forum. And uh, if you're a lucky one to get in there, you might get to hear our reaction show a little bit early. So, And that. one lucky child will get to go into our chocolate factory if you find the Lions of Liberty Golden Ticket. I was going to save that reveal for exclusively for, for forum members, but... Yeah, well. Now, I want to add in here before I go into this next topic. You can find all of the Rand news from the past couple of weeks at uh, www... Why do I say that every time? Lionsofliberty.com. Because you're old school. You want to <laughs> emphasize that this is indeed taking place on the World Wide Web. That's, that's right. Lionsofliberty.com forward slash Rand. Uh, the biggest item, I think, from the past couple of weeks uh, on the, the good side of things is that Ron Paul has finally crawled out of the rabbit hole and has decided to campaign with Rand in Iowa. All right. Well, I mean, that's a rabbit hole that the Rand campaign or the Rand advisor stuffed him in in the first place because that was actually, it seemed anyway, a decision of the Rand Paul campaign. Early in the campaign, they kind of said, look, we're not we're not going to have Ron campaigning for us. He's not a part of the campaign. Um, you know, he's Rand's dad and he's just some guy who happens to be this guy's father, I guess. Totally unrelated politically, which seems crazy because Rand Paul's entire base came from the 2008 and 2012 Ron Paul campaigns. And it just seems absurd. I, I get it because he's trying to do this. I'm mainstream. I'm not kooky. Separation from your dad thing. But hey, dude, your last name is Paul. You're not going to be able to get that far away from it. If they want to dredge up, you know, anything Ron Paul has said and use it against you, they're going to do that regardless of if you have him campaigning for you. And Ron Paul has even said we basically have the same beliefs. So God, you need to fire up the base, get him out there. And he's going to be in Iowa over the next week campaigning. Yeah, it's about time. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Like you said, they really made it to, really went out of the way to distance themselves. I think even with the, the you know, their hairs are so different. They're probably like, oh, Rand's adopted, not even the same blood. But, yeah, they're giving back to the base. And I wonder, you know, I'm guessing Ron didn't hold out. But I also, in my, the back of my mind, I'm wondering if Ron Paul was like, I can't be seen with this this neocon of mine that, it's, <laughs> that I spawned. So he's been waiting. He and wants to arm time. the car. Cur- Arm the, the cards, those crazy cards. 
So, do we ever hear back from a Kurdistan? And now, friend? when did Ron Paul become Harry Carey, by the way? I don't know. Hey, why are you trying to arm the cards, Randall? <laughs> Randall, can I do the hurricane of fingernails and teeth? So, anywho, yeah, so it's, it's great he's out there again, and Rand's coming back to his libertarian values in a big way, which was advised. You know, people get leading into Iowa are saying, you got to get back to it. You're losing in every way, just going against the GOP and going against the neocon. You're losing the reason why you were so interesting, why Time named you Man of the Year or, or uh, Most Interesting Man of the Year or something yeah, like definitely that. Definitely not Man of the Year. Not Man of the Year. I think that always goes to, like, a terrorist uh, or, like, or, like, Hitler or something. Oh, it's not George Clooney anymore? <laughs> George Clooney, a terrorist? I don't subscribe. I Allegedly. Subscribe to, the last time I saw Time Magazine was when I got my braces in when I was eight years old in the dentist's office. Hmm. I used to read Highlights Magazine. Even now, to this day, Highlights. Now, it. Highlights is awesome. It's great. I, I like finding I, the Rand should get endorsed by Highlights. They should put Rand in a picture and have children find it. But it would be really hard, so the parents have to help, and then they'll get kind of Hey, he's going for it. the youth vote, right? That's right. Which I want to talk about. We'll talk about when we get into... Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're talking about Iowa. Let's talk about this now. Well, let, let's first, of course, give our grade to, uh, the, to including Ron Paul, because some people might say, hey, no, he's just he's finally making traction with the GOP base. Putting Ron in there might, might scare people off and say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He wants to be a non-interventionist. That's scary, but... I imagine from your tone that you actually see Ron's inclusion as a... Paulus! And I would agree with you. That's definitely a Paulus. Getting back to my uh, kind of my train of thought here in Iowa. So the debate's coming up in Iowa, and Rand Paul's campaign has been touting the fact that they have, like they said, a thousand precinct captains. So they've got this massive uprising of support. Ahoy! Ahoy! With a, all aboard the Rand ship. They have to wear those, like, captains The good outfits, right? ship. Randy pants. It's a sweet trip to a place that dances all the time. With a thousand precinct captains. Ahoy! <laughs> So that's what he's saying. And, of course, you know, a lot of these are, are young people. A lot of them are college-age kids. And hey, How old do you have to be to be a captain? You can be like 18 a, That's a very a good captain? question. Well, when you're in Paul's campaign, they're probably signing up babies. Okay. You know, it's anybody can do it. But, you know, I, I just think I think in a way they're overestimating that, that young vote, that college-age vote. I mean, you were there where we, we went to, uh, or you weren't there, but we went to UCLA for a Ron Paul rally, and it was packed to the gills. You know, the stadium, he filled this tennis stadium, uh, it's fantastic, and I'll embed the video of that in the show notes as well. But did that actually turn out to be massive support? Not really. So I worry in a way that, you know, Rand's building this Iowa up, he's building up this college support, and it's just going to peter out like everything else. Yeah, I look at it a couple ways. I mean, at one point, you're right in the sense that statistically, by the numbers, no, young people don't vote. They just don't. Like, the people that vote are 50, 60, and over. Like, that's who really votes consistently. Yeah, they'll be on social media. They'll say, hey, great, on social media. Bernie's but when it comes awesome. To half, these, out, half these people posting Bernie Sanders memes are not going to vote no, for Bernie. Not going because they're not going to vote for anybody. Because no. they're not going to go to the polls. They're just not. A lot of people will. I know there's going to be people like, no, what are you talking about? I'll go to the polls. I'm not talking about you. I'm there's talking about a lot of people <laughs> posting on Facebook with an I voted sticker. Yes, they will. Now, getting as many likes as possible because, you know, that's important. Yeah, many, many people will speak politically, and, and many people our age will go to the polls but most won't that's no. just a fact unless we see a sea change in politics this year that's not what's happening however when when he has people that are actually signed up as precinct captains and he i think he has something like thirty thousand students or for for rand paul or there's this organization in iowa so if, if he actually has that many captains that which aren't necessarily students they're just you know party activists um Captains are pretty real. I mean, those are people that are, you know, have a precinct. They're in charge of their precinct. They're in charge of getting delegates out, um, and or not getting delegates out, but getting supporters out to help get delegates for Ron, for Rand Paul. Uh, so I think that that is a significant number. I think Rick Santorum had something around that, and he won Iowa last time. At least he won the popular vote, which is all the media is going to report. Even though Ron Paul actually got the most delegates from Iowa. That's a fact. Did you know that, kids? Did you know that? Well, you probably do if you're a Ron Paul fan, but if you just watch TV, you don't know that because they don't say anything about that. All right, so you have a little bit of a rosier outlook than I do, I think, on Iowa. Well, I mean, I don't think it means he's going to win Iowa, but I think that it means that he'll have stronger support than the fifth and sixth place that he's polling. Yeah, well, I hope, you know, obviously, I hope you're right. And now, I did predict he was going to win New Hampshire, which is looking like a, lo a little bit of a long shot. Well, we'll, we'll see. see. I mean, Iowa can change the game, you know? Yeah. No, it, that's a fact. When, if he can come out strong in Iowa, that changes the game and everybody looks at him as, okay, he's a, a legitimate contender, something they would not have done if he had gone in that damn undercard debate. Right. One more reason. Is there even anything to grade here or we're just talking well, about yeah, we're just, having youth? We're just, we're just shooting the ball. Not everything needs a grade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you, you just shoot the randy pants. Sometimes you just got to go off the cuff. There you go. So here's one thing we can, we can grade. Uh, and I won't reveal 
my grade yet, but oh, Rand thirsting to grade embracing things. the youth as always. Uh, Rand's very active on social media. How far into the youth is he going? Or are we going to get to that later? I don't want to talk <laughs> about how far Rand goes into any youth. Oh, I don't want to talk about anything along. I may lines. have phrased that oddly. Uh, this is a little bit awkward. A little bit awkward. You might want to check your browser history. Maybe erase that. Now. Rand Paul, active on social media, as always, went and, uh, went and did a Reddit Q&A, which, of course, Barack Obama did. It's a very popular thing for all, all these political All the hip do. politicians are doing it. You got to get in on it. We got to get it, on a Reddit it's AMA. The, it's the, uh, the tramp stamp slash tribal tattoo for politicians in this age. <laughs> Basically. That's, that's essentially what it is. So Rand Paul got his tramp stamp on Reddit, and uh, there is a question which was posed to Barack Obama and which was ignored. A vital question. That question is, would you rather fight... A horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Now, what would you say to that? Wow, that's tough. And without knowing Rand's answer, because I'd have to read your columns to do that. (laughs) Why would you? Who's got the time? No No, one else does. No, I did read, but I I did actually forget what he said. He skims. Um, Man, that is actually difficult. But I am going to say that I would rather fight one horse-sized duck because I just feel like a hundred of those little things would be really hard to like kick away, and I feel like a few of them would get in some bites on me. If there's just one, I can get like some kind of weapon, you know, get get a gun or yeah, a, you're using you're using fists, man. There's no guns. Oh, you involved. have you can only use your fists. Yeah, you're not allowed to oh, bring in a bazooka. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I'll just get my tank. Can I use a knife? No, just my fist. Just your fist. Oh, shit. All right. And then I changed my answer to 100 <laughs> duck-sized horses. All right. Because then I can just step on them. And I agree with you. And it's funny, a duck, they got a big, hard bill. It's snapping at you. I've been bitten by a duck before. That would it actually hurts. be really scary. A regular-sized duck. That would yeah. be really scary. It's terrifying. Maybe it's a mallard. They're nice. I don't know. But, yeah, it's it's clearly the answer is 100 duck-sized horses. And Rand Paul, as a man of logic and reason... Stated that very clearly and got massive support on the Reddit. <laughs> massive support, really? Massive. At least three at of, least three comments. Lots of upvotes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're talking about it. So, like, people are writing about it in Politico, so it was a fairly big deal that he answered it. But really? I like Politico that. covered that? Politico <laughs> covered it. Bo- slow day at the political office. Yeah, huh? I know, right? But I like that. I like the assessment of power. That shows a man who can break down the power of your enemies, decide the right course of action, and then act on it. And more importantly, Rand did not talk about occupying any uh any tiny horse lands <laughs> he didn't talk about bombing any any hospitals that may or may not contain duck sized horses he didn't horses. say he wanted to declare war on the horse sized duck uh population no and he's not talking about okay. arming the uh the tiny frogs uh that are badger sized whatever with the uh, i don't know i'm making some curd references I, I just, just said not working we'll duck. just move around <laughs> <laughs> the duck size. It's really hard to to, get to straighten all this out. It really is in your mind to get duck duck sized horse. horses. Okay, God, say that. Five Does he want to restrict immigration on duck sized horses? That's a good question because if they're refugees, then clearly they would be restricted. Right. What if they're escaping a land where they are prosecuted by people just stomping on them because they had this question posed to them and they're oh like, God. "Well, I guess we'll just stop on you." And they're like, "Oh, we got to go to America. They would never do this here." And then President Rand Paul's like. Just kidding! We're not going to let you in. No, we are going to let you in, but then we're going to stomp on you. What if President Rand Paul only wanted to stomp on them to tenderize them? Because I bet a tiny horse would be pretty good deep fried. Mm. We're really going a little off topic here. Hey, we can spend the rest of the show on this. As far oh, as I'm talking concerned. about animals that we'd like to be tiny to deep fry and eat. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> that Bears. Very, that very. T- they always say when you're doing a podcast, you're supposed to niche down as far as possible. <laughs> so I would say that's pretty. That's niching pretty far. We're, di- we're digging real deep, and you know, hey, you know, there's a forum somewhere where. People are very passionate about this topic, and we've reached them. Welcome, those three people. Welcome, Jerry, Marv, and, and Curly. That's right. Put your pants back on, guys. All right. We got but, uh, to get back to politics. To address this specific question, though, um, I would give this, I think, a resounding Paulus! <laughs> and I also agree it's a Paulus! <laughs> Now, Rand, of course, is not without some controversy, so let's get into something like that. There's a, there was something that's a little bit of a contentious topic, uh, which is always abortion. You know, people have... Abortion's contentious? Yeah, can you believe it? Come on. Yeah, so... You, know, you mean ripping fetuses out of a mother's womb is, is a contentious topic in America? Do you oh. rip or do you snip? It depends. It depends on how far along it is. I guess it depends on if it's a back alley abortion Sometimes, or a uh, regular abortion. Yeah. We'll get into that it's because Rand introduced a bill called the Life Begins at Conception Act. And what this is, is a, as the name might indicate, it basically says that a fetus has all of the rights and liberties that uh, are entitled by the 14th Amendment the moment it is conceived. 
Does that mean that he wants fetuses to be forced to purchase health insurance under Obamacare? I believe that you know, that would be something they would have to do. The logical conclusion. Or pay right? the taxes, baby tax. Or, yeah. A little bit of that umbilical cord cut off. But yeah, so we introduced this bill and, you know, obviously this has a lot of difficult circumstances around it. Uh, you get into the issues with what are the rights of the mother and versus what are the rights of the fetus? We've talked about this in the past, and I know you and I don't see exactly eye to eye, but I'll voice my opinion, and then you can counterpoint me. Ooh, all right. So the I, way I, I have already sent out, set up my contrarian opinion. Good, I'm giving you time to formulate a nice okay. a nice uh, response. Oh, oh, it's formulated. And rip me down. Don't you worry. But the way I look at it personally is Rand's been a avid campaigner, uh, I believe because of his religious background, and saying, you know, fetus rights, protecting them at the moment of conception, obviously, as this bill indicates. Now, for me, this is an attack on the rights and liberties of women. And uh, they're obviously their control over their own body, what they do with it. I personally am an advocate for cutting off where you can have abortions at maybe seven months. That's what I believe it's actually a human being where there's enough brain function to warn it. But for that, to me, I think it's more or less a bundle of cells. I don't consider it a human being. So I believe the woman should have rights over what she does with it at that point. Okay, well, I both completely disagree with you and also agree with you. <laughs> so talk about flippy floppy before I even say anything. John like, Kerry over here. I, I, I always thought when people say things like, you know, a bundle of cells, that's like a silly argument because it's really, it's not indicating what that is. And obviously that bundle of cells, yeah, it's, I mean, we're a bundle of cells too. It's just a matter of what that bundle of cells is. And to me, like once uh, uh, there is conception, that is a life. And I think that people in the abortion debate that deny that that is a form of life anyway, a developing life, it's, it's kind of getting us away from the issue. Now, that doesn't mean I support Rand's bill or support the method he's coming at, at that from because just because it's a life doesn't mean that that life supersedes the rights of the mother who was also there first. <laughs> she was the first life. It's her body. There's another person in that body, a developing person in that body. So we do have to account for, I guess, the rights of both individuals, but the mother does have to have, I guess, rights up to a point. And, and, and we've, I've only touched on abortion recently in a couple episodes because it is a very difficult issue. Like, I don't know where you get seven months from. Like, that's just like, seems arbitrary to me. At the same time, I can't give you a day where, you know, it's right or wrong because it's, it's just hard. There's, there isn't a day that anyone actually knows that, okay, this is the day on the, the 273rd day of, of being in there that that's now a, uh, you know, that's now a person. And now, well, now you can't, do anything to it um but i mean yeah I, I i disagree with his bill because you can't say that it, basically his purpose is to, to deny rights of the mother to do anything in regards to removing that fetus and to me it, unless you are harming the individual harming that clump of cells however you want to call it uh you do have to give the mother the precedence there because it is her body um the, the, the problem does come when that is a life when there is you know, some amount of brain function when a baby, when it can feel pain. And, and then, I mean, to me, the, the only way to come to a conclusion of this is to say once that baby or that fetus, whatever you want to call it, can live viably outside of the womb, then you really can't say, because you can remove it from the womb, but you can remove it from the womb without killing it. That's you know? roughly, I think, the seven-month bark. Yeah, though. maybe. That's, I, that's I, basically why I Yeah, and, and I, I just, I, I don't even know if we really disagree on the fundamental issues. I just, I think the way it's framed is often too simplistic. I mean, I think it's silly to say it's just a clump of cells. It's not a life. It is a life. It's just a life in a different form, a life at a different level, a life that I don't think has the same rights as the mother at that point. But it's an it's a difficult issue, and uh, yeah, so, but I also disagree with Rand. Yeah, well, just to muddy the waters a little bit more, the bill also, so Rand's seeking to put this bill through, yet within the bill's text, it also says that there will be no punishment should the mother harm the child. You know, so if she does get an abortion, there would be no punishment for her. There's no repercussions for that. So what does that mean then? So he's making this bill saying that life that has rights and has privileges, but yet the mother can abort it and not have any repercussions. That means that to effectively you know, enact this bill and protect these fetuses' rights, you would have to go after all the abortion clinics, thus outlawing abortion clinics and pushing women who wanted abortions back into back alley clinics. Yeah, and I think that's what Ron has said in the past. His father, who's, you know, also anti-abortion, and he said, I've heard him say in a debate, a debate once, he said, you know, the mother shouldn't be the criminal in that, but the doctor should be if a doctor knowingly performs that act 
And look, it's difficult if you're really just, re- you know, if, if, if it's two weeks in and, and, you know, you know, you don't want the baby and have a doctor remove those cells. I mean, I'll call them cells, but it's cells that are a life, part of a life, a growing life. Um, I mean, I can't say that that isn't something that should be allowed. Uh, at the same time, when there's, you know, there's a certain stage where a baby is feeding, the fetus is feeding, it has a heartbeat. And to remove it, they can't just remove it because, you know, Ron Paul has even told the story of they remove the baby and it's in the garbage and they put it in a, a, a trash can and they can literally hear it crying and gasping for air Ugh, and like stuff yeah. like and that's that's but that's a, a common practice of abortion that when it comes later in life and often even before that seven month point. So I don't even know if the seven month point is necessarily the best place to draw the line. I don't know where it is either. I'm just saying the the debate is way more nuanced than a lot of people make it, and it's way more nuanced than Rand Paul is making it with this bill. And that's why, even despite my somewhat different viewpoint than you on this issue, I do give this a minus. And as you might have guessed from my uh, my diatribe earlier, I, I view this as basically uh, religious ideology masking as political righteousness. So I also give it a minus. So the days of wine and roses for Rand end with that minus. Mm. Now, we'll end on a We're going to drink his wine since he can't have it. Delicious. Blood of the Christ. There's your religious ideology. Ah, delish. Mm, wonderful. Now, we'll end on a little bit of a high note, though, because speaking of drinking. A high note? Oh, hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that's not what you meant. Okay. Sorry. So Rand was on, as you mentioned earlier, The Daily Show. And when he was on The Daily Show, he drank a little Kentucky bourbon, or so we were led to believe, along with uh, Trevor Noah. And he was questioned as, it was kind of like a drinking game. It was an interesting segment, actually. Basically, what they did was Trevor Noah would bring up a topic, and if he agreed with Rand, he would, quote-unquote, do a shot. Now, I don't believe Trevor Noah was drinking all this booze for a hot second, because he was really chugging some big cups. And we'll, we'll link to this segment in the show notes you can watch along. But... Rand, I think, was drinking along, and I will not lie to you, Rand's really gotten pretty damn likable in a lot of these performances. Oh, he's great in these these, uh, media appearances, especially on more laid-back comedy shows where he can loosen up, and he's already a pretty loosened-up guy. He's always joking around, whereas, I mean, I don't know... Jim Gilmore might not. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know Jim Gilmore? I don't want to pick on up. Jim Gilmore too much. He might be a great guy, but. <laughs> well, yeah. But, so Rand, he comes across as a great guy. And, uh, but I want to know, do you think he was drinking or not? I don't think Rand was drinking. Interesting, because I do. do. Because watching, I was watching very closely. I wasn't even listening <laughs> to much of what he was saying, because I was so intent on watching Rand drink. Because he was taking small sips, and I noticed that Trevor Noah's bottles were not labeled with a real brand, and uh, Rand's were real Kentucky bourbon. But so his, I had, think a, oh, his had a separate label? His had, they were separate I bottles. I didn't notice that. It was, uh, it was okay. different bourbons. It was like uh, Four Roses. It was uh, Blanton's. I can't remember which one he actually drank from. Do, it, do but... you think he had the, they had the fake stuff, and then Rand's like, whoa, what, what do you mean? We're doing fake stuff, and Trevor's like, "Yeah, man, I, I cannot do it uh, South African accent, so I'm not even gonna try." He's like, "Just yeah, do man, an Australian I, accent." We're doing, badly. we're doing a show here, mate. <laughs> we're doing a show here. I can't be drinking the real stuff. And Rand's like, "All right, well, I got nothing to do later, so can exactly. I have a real bottle?" Sipping so it up. I want to believe that, so I will. I'll, I'll change my position. Yes, he was drinking. Beautiful, and we agree. So he was great on that show, and then he went on to do another fantastic interview on uh, the Daily Show's little counterpart, The Nightly Show. And on The Nightly Show, host Larry Wilmore asked Rand Paul about Donald Trump. He had this to say. You know, Larry, have you ever had a speck of dirt fly into your eye? Yeah, I mean, that's really annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Annoying. Irritating. Might even make you cry. (laughs) Sure, sure. I'm with you. But if the dirt doesn't go away... Mm -hmm. It'll keep scratching away at your cornea until it eventually blinds you with all its filth, and then it makes fun of you on CNN. I think you got a little personal in there. Uh, I got it. So you're saying that I is a conservative voter and Donald Trump is the speck of dirt, right? No, Larry. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag... A speck of dirt is way more qualified to be president. Well said. 
Yeah, so that was a pretty good exchange, huh? Got got a good laugh from the crowd. Got a uh, a good response from what I can only presume is a, probably a liberal host of the show. I don't know Larry Wilmore personally, but uh, I think we can be safe to say it's. Like I would I would err on that side yes. of things. Yeah, but yeah, well said, Rand. Now, you know, do you think it's a good idea for him to keep going after Trump? Well, in theory, no. I don't think it's. I, I think he's been doing it the whole campaign, and I, I don't think it's helped him. I mean, look, if you're going to go after people, go after the establishment because people are feeling anti-establishment. And we can argue all day. Maybe Trump really is establishment or whatever. He's friends with Hillary Clinton, but he people don't see him as that. They see him as someone who's not owned. And the, the reason he's so popular is because he says things that aren't PC. He says bold things. He makes big, bold, wizard-like statements, and he he comes across as I'm not going to listen to these guys. I'm not one of these politicians. I'm my own guy vote for me i'm fantastic so I, I think you know it's not smart to focus on trump but doing stuff like this i think is fine because it's what a lot of people think <laughs> to themselves anyway this is a liberal more audience he's in front of a younger audience so i think the, the audience that he's talking to here in this context it's fine it's where i criticize him about going after trump is when he just makes all these big statements on the news and just and goes out of his way in debates which i, I that i don't think helps him at all but this stuff is fine and uh, frankly i give this little appearance a pause. <laughs> What about you? I think that uh, you're right. I do agree that it's this you know this kind of context. It's great to go after him. This is stuff that goes viral in a second, and it's not like Trump hasn't said horrible things. So it's not like Rand's going out of line or going above and beyond. You know what Trump would do? It's blustery. I say, haul us. <laughs> And yeah, I would say it's been a pretty good month for Rand overall. I mean, the, considering that he was excluded from a, from a debate, then went on a media whirlwind, and then now as a result of that, I think to some extent anyway, he's back in the big debate. For the most part, not a bad start to the year, considering how much the deck is stacked against him. No, I agree completely. Now, the thing he's got to do now is, of course, Carly Fiorina jumped up from the undercard debate before. He's got to keep this momentum going. He's got to make sure that he stays in this top debate. He's got to have a good, strong showing in Iowa. And uh, let's do our, let's do a little Iowa predictions. Iowa Where prediction. do you think he's going to place? Well, if you listen to some of the people out there, he's going to shock the world and win Iowa. That's what people. That's what some people are saying, based on this, the fact that he has a thousand precinct captains, that he has thirty thousand students on the ground. They're going to completely shock the media, and I, I'm not willing to go out that far on that far of a limb. But I don't think he's going to play sixth. Um, I, I I think he will place at least third in Iowa. Let's All say right. that. I was going to say he was going to play second, although it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could win it. And as you say, shock the world. I'll shock the world and rand with you. Bah, 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 bah. We'll make a difference in the Iowa caucus because of our kids. And our captains. Ahoy, 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 ahoy. Precinct captains, ahoy. That's about all I got. Really? So yeah. we both think he's going to be in the top three. You think? Yeah, I, I think, think he'll play second. Yeah, I, I, these are I, I think these, even these are optimistic projections compared to what the media. I'm trying to basically hedge between what the mainstream media thinks and what the libertarian media thinks. Yeah, exactly. The libertarian media thinks he's going to shock the world and win Iowa. The mainstream media thinks he's going to be like you know last place, like behind like Jim Gilmore. Well, so, like you but, said, it's strong showing on the ground. A thousand is a lot. A lot of precinct captains. Ron Paul shocked the world before, so it's not out of the world of possibility that Rand could really pull a strong showing. Here. And I'm willing to bet, though, even if he doesn't win the straw poll or get reported as the winner based on the popular vote, I do think Rand will get the most delegates from Iowa because that is where the organization really comes in handy. Might not matter in terms of you know public opinion because people don't realize this stuff until it's convention time and nobody pays attention to the inner workings of convention except political nerds like us. So what, how much that matters remains to be seen. But I do think he will, at the end of the day, when the process is complete, have the most delegates from Iowa. I like I'll it. So, by that one. so libertarians pay attention. To the convention. And heck, if you're in Iowa, I mean, look, we have not gone out on our limb as as Rand Paul supporters here, but it, it, in the GOP bubble part, if, if you're a dedicated GOP person, if you're definitely going to vote GOP or whatever, I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm most likely not. If Rand Paul's the nominee, I'll, I'll definitely consider it. But most likely any other you know Republican I don't see as very different than whoever the Democrats are going to put up. But hey, if you're there and you're passionate about Rand Paul and the ideas of liberty, go out. Go knock on doors, man. 
you're in an important place. And for, for better or for worse, and I think it is for worse that we let Iowa, like, dictate how everything goes and New Hampshire dictate how everything goes. I mean, why isn't the election all on one day for everybody? I mean, that's I how— I completely it, agree. That's how it it's should be. Damn drawn-out process. Now, one more thing about Iowa. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, quote-unquote fans of this show, the listeners— <laughs> Why they, are they in quotes? They, I don't know. <laughs> I like putting things in quotes. I'm removing the quotes. You are real don't, fans. Don't try our quote-unquote delicious Chinese food. <laughs> real fans we can touch and grab and— Wait a minute. Never mind. I like That'd those kind weird. of fans. Yeah. But no, our fans have you know, said, hey, I, you know, how can we get on the show? We'd love to take part in it. I'll tell you what. If you're in Iowa and you can get your ass to the caucus and come back and give us a little report on what went down, what you saw, how it was going, how Rand did, how people were feeling, we would love to have you do a little uh, little interview with us and we will include it in a future episode of RPM. Wow. I just got... Got ramshackled on that one. I didn't ramshackled. Even, I, didn't, I got ramshackled. <laughs> I didn't even know that was coming. Okay, I guess we're going to bring someone on. Boom, Maybe. out of the blue. Well, let's see if somebody steps we'll out of okay. the plate. I'm willing to entertain this possibility. Get in there, Joe Canseco. Take a swing for us. Joe Canseco? Is he uh, a Rand Paul supporter? Jose Canseco. Well, John Rocker came out for Donald Trump, so. Oh, I God, know. I know. If only Rand could pull somebody of John Rocker's status. All right, folks. But well, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been uh, too long since we've done a Rand Paul and minuses. We will, uh, I think, we'll commit to doing this as long as he's in the presidential campaign. Band, at least. Yeah, I mean, hell, this this uh, upcoming week is really going to be a big deciding factor in that. So we'll see how long RPM goes. But here's hoping. And please do come on over to lionsofliberty.com on Thursday. We'll be live blogging throughout the GOP debates. I'm not even going to be on the undercard live blogging because that's how sick and twisted I am. And, of course, as I mentioned, we'll be recording our reaction show that evening. Check it out on our YouTube. If you're not on our YouTube channel, get over there because it'll be up a little bit early sometime on Friday. And uh, otherwise, you'll be hearing it on this very podcast next Monday. And, of course, in between that, you've got another edition of Felony Friday hosted by our own John Odermatt. So there's just no shortage of Liberty material spewing from our... Liberty mouths. Just dribbling out. Just dribbling on out. That's how we like to do it. And until the debate, Brian, live live!